Hello and welcome to the weekly podcast from the Huff Heinz Institute for Sports Medicine and Human Performance. I'm your host, Tim Lightfoot, and I want to thank you all for taking the time to download, and watch, and listen. Uh, every week we really enjoy bringing someone, a unique individual in the world of sports medicine, human performance, and health uh, to the podcast. Uh, this week is no exception. We have with us this week Dr. Ryan Pitzinger. Welcome to the podcast, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. Well, Appreciate we're it. so glad to have you. I'm going to take a, a minute here to tell the audience why we're excited to have you here, okay. and then we'll just jump into our conversation. Sounds, sounds good. And uh, so, uh, Dr. Pitzinger, he is currently the Director of Counseling and Sports Psychology Services in the Texas A&M Athletic Department. Uh, he has a Ph.D. in Counseling Psychology from the University of Iowa, Master's Degree in Sports Psychology from California State University of Long Beach, and a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Utah. Been all over the country, haven't have, you? Have, yeah. Have, Academics yeah. that way, right? Yes, yeah. yes. I... Uh, he's been here at Texas A&M since 2016, uh, again, as director of counseling and sports psychology services. You were the first one that we hired, as yes. a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah sure so is. people probably heard sports psychology and they're there and they thought, wow, he works to help athletes perform better and mm -hmm. in a way that that's it. But it's yep. also mental health counseling as well. Yep. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about kind of the overall scope yeah. of what all you do. Yeah. So, um, sports psychology is a large portion of mm -hmm. what I do. And, um, but along with that is anything mental health related. Mm -hmm. So, uh, myself and then Dr. Lauren Craig, who's another psychologist with me within athletics, we really see, um, any mental health concern, any sports psychology concern. So if that's a student athlete, that is just getting to campus and they're having difficulty transitioning um, to college or to a higher level of sport or somebody that's experiencing symptoms of depression, anxiety, suicidality, maybe they had a death in the family or lost, um, a survivor of some sort of assault or trauma, then we'll meet with, you know, for, for those sorts of concerns. And then on the sports psychology side, it's really working with people that are already performing really well. And we're just working on, Hey, how can you achieve a higher level of excellence? So there's nothing wrong with them. Right. It's just working with the things they're doing well. And how can we apply them in other areas of their performance? So we've got an increase in performance, one of your duties. And the other one is to help people's mental state. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I think I would guess people will probably expect the increased performance side, but they might be surprised about the counseling side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, what proportion of your duties do you think those yeah. fall into now? It's a great question. And um, it's very, very rare that I see somebody for just sports psychology. Mm. You know, it's rarely, I would say maybe never, is somebody just coming in for, hey, I'm experiencing a lack of confidence mm. or I want to work on this one because life bleeds in. Right. So, right. Um, and it's not always like a quote unquote problem, mm. right? It's just, there's something else going on. Maybe it's dealing with the pressure. Maybe it's the expectations. Maybe it's the fear of failure um, or, Hey, I'm trying to juggle 18, you know, semester hours with all this athletic stuff with having a significant other. Uh, and so it's working on that stuff, which in turn is going to impact athletic performance. And I think that what in our sports, sport world now we lose that these are people mm -hmm. that we're watching on tv or there we go to the stadium yeah. and watch these are people that have real life going on at the same time yep. and we forget that and i and that does affect them doesn't it 100 yeah. percent. right you got to remember these are 18 22 year old mm -hmm. um young men and women mm -hmm. right, that are dealing with the same stuff that everyone else does that we all dealt with but then on top of that now they're under the microscope and um, and yeah, it's a privilege to, to have that opportunity, uh, but it's also tough to manage that, especially if it's the first time doing it, or if, if you don't necessarily have the best coping mechanisms or the best models to learn from, um, it can be really, really overwhelming. I can't imagine performing in front of a hundred thousand people yeah. and screwing up. Absolutely. I can't imagine a hundred thousand people watching me <laughs> on a daily basis in my job. You it, know? It, exactly. Cause you know, and I tell people all the time, gosh, if I was scrutinized for every mistake I made, I'd be mm. public enemy number one. Right. right? Like I make mistakes all day. Right. And one of the things I talk to with, with student athletes is, Hey, it's, it's not about the mistakes you make. It's about how we respond to those mistakes. Mm. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that that's hard because what we hear in the media, social media, all is, oh gosh, you, you didn't make the throw or how'd you miss that goal or whatever it may be. Um, instead of, hey, how did you respond to that? Mm -hmm. right? Like, what did you do to overcome that sort of stuff? 
And so it's really what we focus on a lot is, all right, hey, how do you respond? How do you make intentional choices Mm -hmm. that will guide your behavior so that you can... Well, and you just hit, I think, a really critical point, and that is now with social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, over the last 10 years, that has become so predominant. Yeah. That that just adds another source of pressure, doesn't it? 100%. Yeah. If you think about, like, you know, bullying, right? It's always been there. Right. Right. right? People making fun of each other, giving each other a hard time at school. Right. But when I was kind of growing up, it was, if if that was happening, that happened from eight to three, and then you went home and you were kind of in, in your, your safe haven of your home. Well, nowadays, if that's happening at school, then you go home and all you got to do is pull up your phone and it can still be there on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with, with a lot of these student athletes is they'll come in from a game, whether that's halftime or after the game and their phone is just hundreds of messages from Mm -hmm every you know keyboard coach that that thinks they know what they need to change or do or you know criticism and yeah there you know there's a couple good things and positive comments but for the most part it is just brutal right and and they'll never see these people that are making these comments they'll never make them to their face and but yet it has such a significant impact Um, so how do you help the athletes with this I mean, how, yeah. how do you, not just athletes, but people in general, yeah. because you know, certainly that's an issue yeah. in, in society in general. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the ways is, is sitting there and listening, mm. right? Sitting there and being empathetic. Mm-hmm. So many times what people will do is say, hey, don't listen to that. They don't matter. They're not the ones suiting up. They're not the ones in the jersey. And you're right. They aren't. However, it still hurts. Still a voice in their ear. Right? It's yeah. still. And so just sitting there listening, gosh, that'd be really tough. Yeah. Like, I don't know how I would manage being that angry or feeling that bad about myself and just allowing them to have the space to talk about it, not mm. needing to fix it. Mm. Like, I don't need to take their pain away. Right. They can just talk about it. And it's very rare that people give them the opportunity to, to do that, mm. right? Right. Because even in my personal life, sometimes it's hard for me to actually hear what people are saying. I want to try to fix it and take it away. Right. Right. But as a psychologist, I, that's oftentimes some of the most helpful things I can do is just sit there, listen, care. Right, because people are smart. They know how to fix their own problems. I'm not necessarily there to fix that. I'm just there to kind of help support, care about them throughout that process. And being in the athletic department, um, you're not necessarily with the, the whole university, but mm-hmm. this is something that we're seeing in university wide, yep. not just in athletics. This need for counseling services yeah. for all students. I mean, you see that on a national basis. Yep. I, I, so I just left a meeting actually uh, with uh, Dr. Marianne Covey, who's the director of uh, counseling and psychological services caps over on, on campus. And um, she actually started the kind of relationship with athletics and the counseling center years and years and years ago. And we were just talking about, you know, she was saying that there was over 300 people that, that registered for new appointments over at the counseling center this week alone. So wow. there's so many people. 300 that, new ones just yeah, this week alone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, it, and that's just the general student population. And so we're seeing kind of a, a similar proportion of, of numbers of student athletes coming in. But yeah, it is. And part of it, pe- people always say, well, gosh, what what's different? You're right. Mm. Like this generation's different from other generations. Um, and I think part of it is, is that people are more willing to talk about this stuff, that it's more acceptable mm-hmm. to, to acknowledge, hey, I'm, I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling anxious. I also think the pressure is higher. Right. The right. expectations, right? That perfectionism is a little bit higher. Um, but I'm glad that people are coming in the door, glad that people are, are being able to be vulnerable and open about it. So one of the things you and I have mm-hmm. talked about before is that I've been in the business a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm a faculty member for 30 years. And mm-hmm. one of the things that I've kind of observed that it, it appears to me that students' coping skills yeah. are not as good as they used to be, or they haven't been exposed to things like failure yep. in the past. They've been so protected. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that just a perception on my part, or is that something that you see or it's been talked about mm-hmm. in literature? Yeah. Yeah, so people ask that question a lot. Gosh, yeah. what's different? These these. Yeah students and young men and women seem like they're different from past generations um you know they're 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 soft they can't handle things as much Mm. and i kind of have a different perspective on it i don't really think that they've they've changed so much right like i don't think that they popped out of the womb all of a sudden being different Different, no i think what's different is the way that we parent Mm. right how we operate in society now how we um that it's hard for parents and and I'm not a parent yet, so I don't really, you know, understand on that level, but I think it's hard for parents to let their children 
experience adversity. Let mm-hmm. them experience difficulties and and kind of pick themselves up, right? Mm-hmm. That are so fast to jump in, mm-hmm. right? Everyone gets a trophy now. All the, and I'm not saying that that's bad, but I think that it's it's hard for people to develop coping strategies and mechanisms to deal with adversity if they've never been put in a position where they have to do that. Right. So, like I and I say it all the time. If, I've quote unquote failed so many times in my life and I will continue to, but that's also what shaped me. Right? Right. It's, it's, it's not about the times that I've made the mistakes or that I've failed. It's how do I deal with that? Right. What do I do to kind of pick up and, and move on? And if you don't have that, it's really hard. <laughs> right. And I can imagine it must be hard for parents, mm-hmm. especially parents of children, uh, parents of athletes who get to watch their child on TV or in yeah. person fail. Yes. That must be very difficult for them, and I'm sure they want to protect them as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's the intention, right, is, right. is protection. And it's funny, I've, I've talked to my mom about this just over the years, and, and she's always said the hardest part about parenting was having to sit back and watch me get through things, right? Mm. Like she wanted to jump in, and she could kind of save the day, right. but also knowing, gosh, if I do that, he's not developing that sort of stuff. And so I think that that is, is a really fine line to walk mm-hmm. um, because the intention is really great. Hey, I want to help. I don't right. want them to struggle. I don't. I want them to have it better than how I had it. Right, um, right. Which is great, but then how do you balance that? Right. Yeah, T- it's a tough balancing act, as you yes. said, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. So let's flop to the yeah. sports psychology side yeah. and the helping performance. Um, what, what's kind of the most common approach that you take? If you mm-hmm. have an athlete that says, hey, I've lost confidence or whatever, it, how do you handle that? How do, how, what's, yeah. what, how do you take, do you go after visualization or? Yeah, so a lot of those buzzwords, right? Visualization, <laughs> goal setting, um, I ran out. breathing. I, that's when I ran out right. with visualization. <laughs> yeah. Present moment focus, um, all that stuff we, we definitely spend time on and, um, and incorporate. But the example that you gave, somebody comes in, hey, not having confidence. Mm-hmm. One of the first things we'll talk about is, right, I'll, I'll hear them, understand kind of what that means to them, and then I'll often ask, hey, what is confidence? And that's all of a sudden when the student athlete kind of falls flat and they're like, shoot, I don't really even know. Like, I know what it, what it is, but I don't yeah. know how to explain it. And so we talk about, hey, the definition of confidence is the belief that I can be successful. Mm-hmm. That's really what it is, mm-hmm. the belief that I can be successful moving forward. And so... One of the things in our society is we're taught so many times is you have to be humble, can't be conceited, can't be a narcissist. Mm. So people have a really hard time acknowledging when they do things well. Well, right. right. So I'll ask students, right. hey, what what do you do well in your sport? Well, I don't know. I, I, I might maybe do this or I've, I've been told that I, I kind of could be good at this. And so we talk about, hey, it's hard to be able to be confident if you can't own that you're good at stuff by owning it isn't saying that you're better than anyone else or that you're best in the world. It's just saying, I did this well at mm. this point in time. And so it's getting them to start to engage in kind of that, that positive self-talk mm-hmm. and acknowledging, wow, I, have, I actually am good at this. I don't have to be better than anyone. I don't have to be best in the world. I can just know that when I try really hard, when I put my effort, that that's when I'm successful. And then that starts to build that belief, mm-hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, that confidence kind of increases. And I think another thing with confidence is really the fear of failure. Right. One of the, my perspectives that I kind of work from is that fear often runs the vast majority of the choices that we make in our life. Right. If you, if right. you think about right. it, we do a lot of things because we're afraid. We're afraid of getting in trouble. So we'll make certain decisions. Right. right. Maybe that's to come in Most to of work. Us, yes. Right. Like, hey, <laughs> I, I don't want to get in trouble with my boss. So I'm going right. to come in and work on time. Right. Or I'm going to make sure that I do all my work before I leave. Right. But if we kind of switch that mentality a little bit of, hey, what if I started making decisions based upon um, being able to be as successful as I possibly can? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to make this choice to work really hard and get extra reps today because I want to be the best at what I do personally. Right. Right. Then all of a sudden, now we're making choices that are helping us be successful opposed to just not messing up. And there's a big difference, right? We've heard that, hey, playing... To win or playing not to lose. Right. And so it's just kind of shifting that mentality right. a little Even bit. Even hear, hear broadcasters talk about that. Yeah, yeah, right? They're playing not to lose, and they wind up losing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly, because yeah. we're so afraid of failing. And so it's just being aware of that. Right. right. Part of it, you can't change anything unless you're aware of it. And so it's getting athletes to just check in. Hey, what am I feeling right now? Gosh, I'm feeling really scared. That's why I'm, I'm making a certain choice. Okay. Hey, I can be scared 
and excellent at the exact same time. I don't have to get rid of this fear mm. in order to be excellent. I can, I can have both. You know, and the example that I give is uh, whenever I get up to talk in front of large groups, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. Like I'm afraid of kind of stumbling over my words or whatever it may be. And so I'll just acknowledge it. Hey, I'm nervous about this. All right, well, what do I need to do? What's one thing I need to do in order to be successful? All I got to do is I got to get out the H and howdy. <laughs> if I can just say howdy, then, right, right it's going to kind of yeah. calm me down a little bit. And so that's my focus. Right. And so it's just finding those little um, kind of focal points of mm. what's going to allow me to be successful. Interesting. <laughs> as, we, as we talk here, I, it, several questions come to mind. And I, between the confidence and the the anxiety Mm -hmm. that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Do you find that athletes uh, differ based on the media exposure of their sports? So, so perhaps uh, differ in their coping skills, we'll say. Um, So perhaps uh, athletes that are in, say, we'll pick on equestrian, Mm -hmm. which is not broad on broadcast TV. It doesn't get a whole lot of attention. It's certainly a varsity sport here at Texas A&M versus uh, football, Mm -hmm. which gets all the attention and, so forth do those athletes have differing uh difficulties dealing with those kinds of things because of the difference in in media attention it's a really good question i don't know i Mm. i on the top of my head i think yeah probably but but then whenever we really look at it i'd be willing to bet that those two athletes probably feel very very similar amounts of pressure because the equestrian woman going out in her you know Mm. let's say on the english side you know fences that's so important to her, just as important as it is to one of the football players. Win. Absolutely, sure, yeah, right? yeah. Like this, is, this is their passion, this is what they've been doing, they're competing, they're a competitor. Right. Um, yeah, it's not gonna be on ESPN, so it'd probably be a heightened sense of, sense of pressure, but it's still just as important. And, sure. and so I think it's just kind of the same, but the consequences um, the, the, uh, of that media exposure are definitely different. So yeah. I think it's just different types of pressure, but probably meaning the exact same or very similar to each. So, so we were talking about parents along this line. We were talking about parents a while ago. If, if you could talk to parents, all yeah. parents one day, and yeah. just said, here's, here's the keys to help your child, whether they're athletes or not, yeah. have positive mental uh, approach to this. I mean, we have to remember September was Suicide Awareness yeah. Month. and I mean, that's become epidemic Absolutely. now in our teenagers. Um, what's the one thing you would tell parents yeah. to, to, to help them help their kids yeah um i love you and i'm proud of you i love you and i'm proud of you those are as as humans just that support just that support right and that doesn't mean um not holding them accountable Mm -hmm. right but at the end of the day uh for the most part you're their parent and not their coach Mm -hmm. and and so um just like all of us, all we, we really want is we want love and acceptance. We want to know that, hey, I'm, I'm important, I'm valuable, and mm-hmm. I'm accepted. And um, being able to, to hear that. Oftentimes, a lot of the student-athletes that we meet with, one of the biggest things is I'm so afraid of disappointing my, my parents. Wow. And I know when parents, if parents had the opportunity to hear that, 99% of the time I know they would probably start crying and say, mm gosh, I don't care what you do out there. Like, I love you and I support you no matter what. But I don't think the student athletes hear that enough. Yeah. Like, genuinely hear that enough. And yeah. so um, being able to just provide that, that support, right? And, then, and I think another thing is, is communication. Asking them, hey, what are you needing? Mm. What are you needing from me? I think so many times, um, I think we all do this, but parents in particular will, will assume, hey, this is what they need. Mm-hmm. Well, shoot, just, just ask them. Right, and if you right. have that relationship, they're going to be able to tell you. Right. So. Wow, good points. <laughs> really, two really yeah, good yeah. good tips. And while we're on this, as we, as we come to the close, I, I um, always ask our guests to give a take home message. Yeah. So, if there was for the people watching this, if there was one thing, I think your tips for parents are fabulous. Mm-hmm. But if there was one other big take home message that you wanted to give everybody, you wanted everybody to remember, what would that be? Um, I think one of the biggest things is, is be aware mm-hmm. and what's, what's going on and, um, kind of challenge yourself, right? Ask the question, Hey, am I striving for success or am I striving to not mess up? Right. And Excellent. am I striving to be successful? Or am I striving to just not make a mistake? And, I, and I, I think that once we ask ourselves those questions, we behave differently because it's like, no, yeah, I'm, I'm just playing this one safe. 
Right. Instead of no, I'm I'm going out there and I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to go after it. And um, I think that we're a lot more fulfilled when we actually try to go and and be successful instead of just not mess up. So that was gold. You know, the last the last five minutes <laughs> of this have been gold. I hope yeah. everyone watching this realizes that that those three tips and that yeah. take home message and the tips for parents. That was great. Um, and so regular listeners uh, and watchers of the podcast know that this is also the time when we do our podcast question of the week. And so our podcast question of the week that comes from our producer, Troy, um, this week is that what are some ways the younger generation can deal with negativity on social media? So be the first one to send us the answer to that question on, uh, to send that email to huffines at tamu.edu. That's huffines, H U F F. I-N-E-S at T-A-M-U dot E-D-U. Be the first one and you get one of our Nifty Podcast t-shirts. Uh, we often give more than one away a week, so uh, just go ahead and send, you, send us the answer if you have it. So we look forward to having that. Ryan, thank you again for taking yeah. time to be with us. No, thank you so much for uh, having me. I appreciate it. And well, with the tips that you gave, we may have to expand this whole series <laughs> into something else. Tips with Ryan or something like that. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> Uh, And I want to thank all of you that have been watching for taking the time to download us and watch. Uh, We've enjoyed bringing this podcast to you as we do every week. We hope that you join us next week for another interesting person from the world of sports medicine, human performance, and health. And until then, we hope that you stay active and healthy. Thank you so much. That was fun. Hey, that's great. That was fun. That was fun.